Good evening. Our main story is that all British citizens in China should leave the country if they can to minimise the risk of exposure to the coronavirus. That's the official advice published by the Foreign Office earlier today. Work is continuing to bring home Britons from Hubei province where the outbreak began. And so far, 427 people have died from the virus, all but two of them in mainland China, with more than 20,000 cases confirmed in no fewer than 26 countries. The number of cases is thought to be doubling every few days. But the World Health Organization says it still doesn't amount to a pandemic. Our correspondent John Sudworth has the latest from Beijing. In Wuhan, they've turned a stadium into a hospital. State media using images like these to reinforce a message. China's getting things under control. But the deserted airports and cancelled flights show its fear that seems to be winning. Now the UK, along with Germany, France and New Zealand, are advising those who can to leave. It's prompted some to try to bring their flights forward. The um, British government advice has not really been that helpful because you can't just take a flight out, you know, if, if the flights aren't there, if they're not available, if you can't get through to the airline, so, yes. How about you, Lydia? Did, did, did it add to your sense of worry when you, when you hear governments telling people to get out if they can? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, the biggest worry was always that the city would get locked down because we were in the second worst province after Hubei. Guangdong is the, the second worst. Yeah, second effective, worst. Effective, yeah effective. so there have been cities in the province that have been quarantined, and once you're quarantined, you're stuck. This is Wenzhou, more than 500 miles from Wuhan. Residents kept indoors, transport shut down. These scenes are driving fears in foreign capitals that the virus may not be contained. The advice to 30,000 Britons in China to head to the airports is extraordinary. The world's second largest economy, deeply integrated into global supply chains and transport networks, now essentially deemed too risky. Oi. Oi. But it's not easy for all Brits to leave. Little baby Atlas doesn't yet have a passport. It seems to be that the news is saying that um, the elderly and the young are the, are the most vulnerable to, to virus generally, uh, to viruses generally. So we're a little bit anxious about that. And Danny's wife, Viola, is a Chinese national without a valid visa. But the UK government has announced that shouldn't matter. I've spoken to the Chinese foreign minister and received reassurances that no families that uh, want to return, UK national related families, will find themselves divided on the basis of dual nationality. China's fighting on, but with so much still unknown about this virus, the international community isn't taking any chances. John Sudworth, BBC News, Beijing. Let's talk a little more about today's events then with our global health correspondent, Tulip Mazumda. Uh, Tulip, first of all, um, what's behind the decision? Well, this is a decision based more on logistics rather than public health. China has been severely restricting travel um, in the country and there are concerns that it's going to be increasingly difficult for British people to get back. Um, last week, British Airways and Virgin announced they were uh, suspending direct flights between the UK and China. And uh, there are still some other carriers that are travelling between the two countries. And the Foreign Office has said today, if you can get onto one of those flights get onto one of those flights. Quite a bit of um, talk today about the difference or the contrast between what the British government is doing and what the World Health Organization is suggesting. What can you tell us about that? Well, the World Health Organization's official advice to countries is to not restrict travel or trade at all. They say there's no public health reason to do that and it can just um, stigmatise some of these communities all around the world. Um, we have just heard tonight that there's a Belgian woman who was on board uh, a flight bringing people back um, from China into France. Um, it's been confirmed that she has the coronavirus. Now, there were 11 British people on that flight as well. Ten of them have already been quarantined uh, on the Wirral in a hospital there. Uh, the 11th person is already being um, uh, tested for the coronavirus. Virus. So as and when these symptoms come up, those people will be um, diagnosed very quickly and they'll get treatment very quickly. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing these quite severe 
uh, measures being taken here in the UK, quarantining people off planes and all around the world. And it is in the hope that they can stop this becoming a global pandemic. And that is where you would see a sustained person to person spread in communities in different countries all around the world at the moment. We're not seeing that, but it's hoped that some of these more extreme measures will stop that from happening. Okay, Tulip, once again, thanks very much. Tulip Pazamdar there.